Let's do a quick primer on measurement and significant figures. So let's say we want to measure the length of this paperclip. Well, we see that the length of the paperclip is somewhere between 3.7 and 3.8 centimeters, or around in here. And so we might expect we'd say 3.7 something centimeters, we might want to estimate that next digit. So consider these two options, 3.79 centimeters or 3.79561 centimeters. It seems reasonable that the 3.79, we could estimate that next digit, but we shouldn't be able to estimate three other digits of precision in our measurement. That seems much more precise than our measurement itself. And indeed, that's what we should do. We should report a measurement that is consistent with the precision of our measurement device. Um, the second option here is way more precise than we could actually measure with our uh, simple ruler here. This is the idea behind significant figures, also sometimes called sig figs. Uh, the sig figs tell us how precise a measurement is by counting the number of digits in that measurement. So they give us some sense of how precise we have a particular measurement. Let's talk a little bit about how you would determine the number of significant figures in a number. Uh, so first, non-zero digits are significant. So in the number 427, that only has three sig figs. Uh, but when you have zeros, it gets a little more tricky. So zeros in between other digits are significant. So in the number 8.006, uh, the zero, 00 inside in the middle there tells us something about the precision of the number. And so those are indeed significant figures. So we'd say this has four significant figures. However, when you have leading zeros, those are not significant. This usually happens when you have a decimal representation of a number. Uh, so if you have 0 0.00092, um, the three leading zeros in front of the 92 are just telling you, to, telling you about the magnitude of the number. They're not telling you about the precision of the number. And so we'd say there's only two sig figs here. However, if you do have trailing decimal zeros, they are significant, but they have to be decimal zeros. So, for example, in this second one here, 0 0.072000, those three leading or trailing zeros tell us about the precision of the measurement, saying we know the, the measurement down to that many decimal places. And so we'd say there are five significant figures in this number. However, it's not a, if it's not a decimal representation, um, then we would say we don't really know anything about those. They're just telling us about the order of magnitude. So 72,000, these zeros are only telling us about the order of magnitude of the measurement. They're not necessarily about the precision. So we'd say there's only two significant figures in this number. One way to get around that is to just write your numbers in uh, scientific notation, and then any trailing zeros will be significant. Uh, finally, uh, let's discuss how you calculate with significant figures. So let's say we want to add two numbers um, that have different number of sig figs. So in the example we have here, 14.2 plus 3.432. Our final number should only be as precise as our least precise number in our measurement or in our calculation. So 14.2 has three sig figs and its uh, end sig fig is in the tenths place. Um, 3.432 is much more precise. It has extra digits in the uh, hundredths and thousandths place. Um, but our final number shouldn't be more precise than the 14.2 number. Um, and so we drop all of those other sig figs, uh, and we just end up with 17.6. So we keep everything to the tenths place, because that's where the um, decimal, or that's where the significant figures ended in our least precise number. When you multiply or you divide, you always use the fewest number of significant figures for your final answer. So in the example I have here, I have a number in, with three sig figs times a number with five, five sig figs. My final answer will only have three sig figs. So I'm going to round everything and cut off down to that three sig figs. Um, again, because that's our least precise number in our calculation. And so our results always end up at our, uh, with a number of significant figures of our least precise number.